giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Ma'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ma'ashem Rakakwadash, Shalom to the Lord's elect. And um, this will be another video uh, spotlighting the subject that the uh, so called Jews, which we call the Small Hatters, 1948ers, are not the true Israelites of the Bible. Now, are there Israelites scattered among them? The answer is yes. But on the whole, they are not the true Israelites of the of the Bible. And the main proof of that is the fact that uh, when you go back to May 14th, 1948, you had the state of Israel that was established, okay, by... Um, I believe the prime minister at that time was uh, David Ben-Gurion, right? And supposedly the state of Israel was established back in May, back on May 14th, 1948. But the problem with May 14th, 1948, it, it does not line up with Bible prophecy of what's really going to happen when the real Israelites are brought back to the land of Israel. And that's what we're going to explore in this video and I've done videos on, on this subject, and um, I was inspired to do this video that I'm about to do now by watching Elder Pastor's video, and, uh, uh, particularly around the uh, ninth minute of what he said in this video concerning Vocab Malone. Because, you know, Vocab Malone, he doesn't believe that, you know, that uh, Israelites are so called blacks so-called uh, West Indians, so-called Haitians, so-called Mexicans, so-called Puerto Ricans. He doesn't believe that. If you were to ask him in his heart of hearts, he believes that the so-called white people over there in Israel, that they're the real Jews, all right, that they're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. That's what he believes. Now, um, are the Israelites scattered among them looking like them? The answer is yes. And we have to teach that because the Bible teaches it. You know, the nation of Israel was scattered among all nations. Clearly the scriptures say this. But on the whole, the majority of the people over there are not the true Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Okay? It said, the prophecy said that our land would be taken over by strangers. Okay? As it is written, Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, that's the other nations, until the times be fulfilled. All right. So without further ado, um, let me just play a part of this video here and we'll get into the subject. So let's get into it. With Russia, with these different wars. So this is from the video. Um, you can't add or take away even from the law. Vocab demonizes the Israelites. This was put up by Elder Pastor. That's his channel there. Uh, GMS declaring the end. All right, so let's go. Israel and so forth. Anyway, let's 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 listen. Yourself, Cam. They have a group that teaches in the kingdom. Not only will they enslave non-Israelites as they deem it, because Israelites, they will enslave. Well, that's according to Bible prophecy. I can pull out one scripture. Of course, us Israelites are going to enslave non-Israelites. First of all, the, the non-Israelites were created to serve us. All right? They were created to serve us. We are royal people. Royal people have subjects. That's what makes them royal. They have subjects. This is the book of Deuteronomy 7 and 6. It says, For thou, talk about the Israelites, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord. Not all people, even though the Heavenly Father created all people. This is what a lot of people don't get. Even though the Heavenly Father created all people, not all people are holy unto him. Okay? Not all people are holy unto him, even though he created all people. There's only a group of people that's the, that the Heavenly Father himself considers holy, that he made holy. And those people happen to be the Israelites. The word Israel means he is a prince of power. The seed of Jacob, okay? The chosen line is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And not all people come out of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? The seed of Jacob is also known as the Israelites. 
So Deuteronomy 7 and 6, for thou art unholy, for thou, now who's saying this? This is Moses speaking to the Israelites. If you go in the book of Deuteronomy 1 and 1, it tells you that. It says, these be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness. Okay, so there's the, there's, there's the proof. So Moses is speaking to the Israelites in this book. Okay, so this is what he says about the Israelites. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art an holy people. So who is it referring to? The Israelite people. We are holy people unto the Lord, thy power. His name is Yahweh, and he's our power. The Lord, Yahweh, thy power have chosen thee, you Israelites, to be a special people unto himself. And the Heavenly Father has not changed that. That still stands, man. The Heavenly Father, he, he don't change. Okay, let's go to the book of Malachi 3 and 6 to prove that. And everything we say should be back, backed up by scripture. So you know it's not our words, but the words of the Heavenly Father, right? Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the Lord. This is the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, speaking through the prophet Malachi. That's how the Lord speaks. He speaks through, through his prophets. He speaks through his prophets. Okay, so Malachi was just another one of his prophets. And the word prophet means to say before. When you look it up in the Latin, the etymology of the word, it means to say before. So here's Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. So he don't change. All right. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So the sons of Jacob are also known as what? The Israelites. So the Israelites are still here. They're not consumed. Now, the point is, he does not change. The Heavenly Father does not change. So what he said back there still stands today. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. The Israelites are still his chosen people. Okay. Thou art, thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. His name is Yahweh. The Lord thy God. <coughs> the Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Not all people are special people. But the Israelites are special people unto himself. Above all people. Now how are you going to get around that? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So there's only one chosen people. That's the Israelites. Okay. Um, let me see. Bear with me for a minute. Yeah, okay. Uh, so... There was another scripture I wanted to bring out. You know what? Let me just go back to here. Maybe I'll, I'll refresh my memory. Yourself, Cam. They have a group that teaches in the kingdom. Not only will they enslave non-Israelites. Okay, now I remember. Not only will they enslave non-Israelites. Now, the question is, is that biblical? Absolutely, it's biblical. The, the non-Israelites enslaved us. So as the saying goes, turn about is fair play. Okay? And even the scriptures back that up. Okay, Jeremiah 30 and 16. It says, Therefore, all they that devour thee. Now, again, this is uh, the prophet Jeremiah. And the Heavenly Father speaking to Jeremiah, letting him know about his people, which were Israelites. Right? He says, Therefore, all they that devour thee. Who's the all they that devour us? All the other nations. You go in the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter, it gives you a list of nations that devoured us. And that's all the other nations. The Edomites, the uh, Ishmaelites, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Hamites. Okay, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. So they're going to be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. That's slavery. Every one of them, not some of them. It says every one of them. So, is, so are the Israelites going to enslave the other nations in the kingdom? Absolutely. Okay, there's no doubt about that. And that's according to Bible prophecy. And I'm reading one example to you right now. This prophecy hasn't been fulfilled yet. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, all our enemies, 
every one of them shall go into captivity. <laughs> How are you going to get around that? Shall go into captivity. That's slavery. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for prey. All right? So all the other nations are going into captivity and slavery underneath us Israelites. And as you read on, you, you see it's talking about the nation of Israel. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. Right? The wound of oppression, the wound of slavery. All right? All the wounds that we suffered underneath the other nations. In particular, the, the nation of Edom. Because we're in slave, we're in slavery under the nation. No, we're in slavery under the nation of Edom right now. We're in slavery underneath the Edomites. So when Yahweh Shai comes, He's going to restore health unto us, like it says here. For I will restore health unto thee, and 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 that begins with Yahweh Shai coming back to liberate us. That's what we're patiently waiting for. And I will heal thee of thy wounds. Right, the wound of oppression, the wound of slavery. Okay, saith the Lord, because they call thee an outcast saying this is zion whom no man seeketh after see and that's our people man that's our people we're on the bottom okay so let's go from there to isaiah 6 and uh isaiah 60 and 10 that just came to mind and one of the jobs the other nations are going to do they're going to build up our kingdom and they're going to do it in slavery isaiah 60 look at the subhead in here <clears throat> It says, <coughs> excuse me, a glorified Zion, right? That's what it says, right? So this is in the future. This is the kingdom. In the kingdom, Zion is going to be glorified. This is Isaiah 60 and 10. It says, and the sons of strangers, those are the other nations, shall build up thy walls. And they're going to do that when? In the kingdom, in slavery. They're going to build up our walls. And their kings shall minister unto thee that's another way of saying slavery minister means to serve so they're going to serve us in our kingdom for in my wrath i smote thee right what does that mean meaning all the curses the lord brought upon us israelites for our disobedience and wickedness were, were put under curses okay you can find the curses in deuteronomy the 28th chapter begin at the 15th verse now those same curses all right, which shows you vocab Malone doesn't understand the Bible, okay? Those same curses that we were put under in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, is going to be shifted. The energy of those curses are going to be shifted to the other nations, especially the nation of Edom, okay? And here's the proof. Deuteronomy 30 and 7, And the Lord thy God, his name is Yahweh, will put all these curses. Now, where do you find the curses? Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, begin at the 15th verse. And we're still under those curses to this very day. We're still under those curses, man. Okay? And the Lord thy God, his name is Yahweh, will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And that's all the other nations. So the same curses we're under right now is going to shift to them, man. Okay? Let's go from there to Lamentations. Let's see if that's not so. Lamentations, the fourth chapter. Okay? Lamentations... So clearly, you, you, you see, if you're watching this attentively, clearly you see Volker Malone does not understand the scriptures. Because the way he said it, as if we're going off, as if we're being wicked by making that statement, that we're going to enslave the other nations in the kingdom of heaven. That's biblical, man. See, he's going up according to his own thoughts and feelings, according to his own emotions. All right? Uh, Lamentations, the fourth chapter. Let's talk about those curses. Lamentations, the fourth chapter, the 21st verse. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. Right, because why, why does it say that? Because they're in their kingdom right now. The Edomites are in their kingdom, beginning with them top banking families, Rothschilds, Rockefellers. And they know that they're Edomites. They know the deal. They know that they're the Edomites of the Bible. There's a document you can pull up right now on Google entitled uh, The Master Plan of the Illuminated Rothschilds. Um, uh, what is his name? Marion Knox. Uh, Marion Knox. I forgot the guy, the other guy's name. Um, Ron Patton. That that's it. Ron Patton interviews Marion Knox. Marion Knox was explaining to Ron Patton. When you read the, all you have to do is go to the document and read it. 
uh, Ron, uh, Mary Knox was explaining to Ron Patton who the, who the Rothschilds were and, and their relation to Bible prophecy, their relation to scripture. All right. In particular, that they're the Edomites that the Bible speaks of. But at the same time, they're trying to claim the house of, uh, the house of, um, the house of David. Okay. Which happens to be the Israelites. You can't simultaneously, you can't be of two nations, man. Okay. You can't be of two nations simultaneously they're of the house of Esau they're not of the house of David okay they're out of the house of Esau the Edomites all right talking about the small hatters the so-called Jews you know beginning with their top banking families Rothschilds Rockefellers Oppenheimers you know <clears throat> anyway rejoice and be glad O daughter of Edom that dwellest in the land of Uz the cup also the cup is what the curses, the cup is a metaphor for the curses, the punishments, which are the curses for one who, who goes against the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. All right, that's why our people went into slavery, because we broke, continually broke the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father that the Heavenly Father gave us as a, as a uh, covenant, a contract. Another word for contract or another word for covenant is contract okay contract so we broke the contract so there had to be a punishment those are the curses all right it's very simple to understand so when it says the cup also the curses shall also pass through unto thee the same thing that deuteronomy 30 and 7 says thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked meaning exposed and and the uh, edomites are being exposed we're in the time where their true nationality is coming out for the world to see that there, there's no such thing as white people that they're indeed the Edomites that the Bible speaks of that term white people that that was a construct created back in 1680 1681 do your research came out of the state of Virginia where this contract this group called white people was created and it was created to give them more rights those kind of people it was created to give them more rights than the so-called Negroes that had just came out of slavery Okay, 1860, 18, um, 1860, somewhere around this, 1861. Okay, you can do your research on, on that term, white people. And then around 1865, supposedly, Lincoln liberated the slaves, which all he did was uh, transfer the slaves from the plantations down south to the plantations up north. That's all he did. All right. He never so-called freed the slaves. He emancipated them. When you look up the word emancipate, it means to be traded from one slave master to another. Okay? So we've never been free, man. This is why the scriptures say no man shall buy them. In the, going back to the book of Deuteronomy, the curses, the one verse where it says no man shall buy you, meaning no man shall deliver you, no man shall save you. We're still in slavery. We're still, we're still in captivity waiting for Yahweh Shai to come and save us, to liberate us. Okay? So it says, The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Those are the curses. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. Right? Be exposed. The punishment, that's the cup, which are the curses. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. Right? The curses that we were put under as a nation. Our bid is almost up. We're coming out of them curses. And those curses are going to be shifted to the other nations. Beginning with the nation of Edom. It says, he will no more carry thee away into captivity. See? So we went into captivity. That was the Captivity was the punishment of our iniquity. Captivity is one of the curses. The punishment of thine iniquity. Think about that. That's the curses. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Okay? He will no more carry thee away in the captivity. That's slavery. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So they're about to be uh, carried away in the captivity. Underneath who? The Israelites. The Edomites and all the other nations. Okay, and I just read to you. This is why when you go back to Isaiah 60, it says that they're going to build up our walls. Now you understand this uh, uh, precept right here. Isaiah 60 and 10, and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee, serve thee. That's slavery. For in my wrath I smote thee, 
What is that? The curses. And who's he who's he talking to? First of all, who's this talking? The Heavenly Father Yahweh. Who's he talking to? The Israelites. He said, For in my wrath, you pissed me off. You kept uh, 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 sinning. You kept worshiping other gods. And you were doing all the things that I told you not to do. So because of that, uh, like a father talking to a son. Because of that, I put a, a, a series of curses upon you. Okay? I punished you. For in my wrath, I smote thee. Right. But in my favor, have I had mercy on thee. And what's the beginning of mercy? The Heavenly Father giving us this knowledge. Which this knowledge shows us why we're in this condition, why we're on the bottom, why we're going through these curses, which we didn't even know those were curses. We thought we just, we were just, hell, we thought we were just cursed, which indeed as a people, we were cursed. A series of curses was put up, put upon us, but we're in the time now where we're getting ready to be liberated from those curses, beginning with the elect of the nation of Israel. And what's the first step of our liberation? This knowledge, this truth. It, 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 this knowledge, this truth liberates us. It begins to liberate us from the clutches of our slave master, from the clutches of this oppression. Knowing, you know the old saying, knowing is half the battle. Knowing the truth is half the battle. So now all we got to do is wait upon Yahweh Shai. When he comes, he's going to totally liberate us. He's going to restore us back to our position, which is to be over all the other nations. He's going to restore us back to our position of rulership. You see? So let's keep reading. It says, therefore thy gates. Now, you go in the book of Revelation, the, uh, what is it, 21st chapter, the apostle John, he saw in a vision, he saw, he saw the future of Israel, the future of uh, Jerusalem in particular. And he saw how the city is going to be built on a hill. It's going to have all these precious stones as, as its foundation. And it's going to have gates around the city, 12 gates to be exact. Okay, so he, so now we understand what it means by thy gates here. Meanwhile, that's back in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah. So this is a future prophecy. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. Why are they going to be open? They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. What's the forces of the Gentiles? Their wealth. Well, who's the Gentiles? The other nations, the Edomites, the Ishmaelites, the Moabites, Ammonites, Ham Ammonites, okay, the other nations, as in non-Israelites, non-Israelites, okay, they're going to bring unto us their wealth, all right, they're going to come to our gates and bring unto, the, unto us their wealth, this is Bible prophecy, man, therefore thy gates shall be co open continually, they shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, that's their wealth, and their kings may be brought, and their kings too, going right into slavery, captivity. Remember what Jeremiah 30, 16 says, every one of them shall go into captivity. So why is Vokab getting upset? Why is he getting bent out of shape? Could it be because he knows deep down inside, the heart, in his heart of hearts, he's not an Israelite? That he's actually of another nation. He's a heathen. Until it's shown, we believe that Vocab Malone is nothing but a heathen. Trying to seek salvation. Okay, the only salvation is coming to the Israelites. Beginning with the elect. Then it goes on to say, For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee. The nation and kingdom that will not serve thee. Oh, they're going to enslave the other nations in the kingdom. Well, what am I reading here? For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee, when we're, when we're in our kingdom, shall perish. See that? Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. You see that? So why is this guy, Vokab, getting all bent out of shape? Okay, it's Bible prophecy, man. Non-Israelites, as they deem it, because Israelites. They Let's say that again. Let's say that again. It's, this clearly shows he does not understand Bible prophecy. Yourself, camp. They have a group that teaches in the kingdom. Not only will they enslave non-Israelites, as they deem it, because Israelites, they will enslave. Not only that. Not only that. that we we gonna be bashing them in the head, the other nations. <laughs> you want to be. Offended, be offended in that. Beginning with our Lord. Our Lord himself going to be bashing them in the head. 
Okay? It is right here in the book of Revelation, the second chapter. Okay? Revelation, the second chapter. And, now, and their women are going to be our concubines. Revelation, the second chapter. Let me see where I should start here. Okay, Revelation, the second chapter, 25th verse. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Now, you notice these words are written in red. These are the words that Yahweh Shai said, right? And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, he that is, that is an Israelite, among the Israelites, he that overcometh, to him will I give power over the nations. That's all the other nations. As in non-Israelites, non-Israelites, okay? We're going to have power over them, all right? To him will I give power over the nations. This is in the, in the New Testament. And he shall rule them, who's the them? The other nations, with a rod of iron, as in an iron scepter, as in an iron scepter. You see that? As the vessels of a potter, shall they be broken to shiver so yeah so if we want we can bash them right over the head okay bash them right over the head all right they're going to be subordinates under us okay why do you think we're going to have a uh, iron rod a rod of iron okay to administer discipline to administer fear that's what we're going to do in the kingdom we're going to administer discipline we're going to administer fear most of all fear once again, the other nations are going to learn a fear of us, us Israelites, okay? Because we're going to be made gods again. We're the only nation that, as it is written, um, I have said, ye are gods, okay? That's in Psalm 82 and 6. We're, that nation fits us. That, that scripture, rather, fits us as a nation. I have said, ye are gods, with a lowercase g, ye are gods, the word Israel means he is a prince of power. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Now what the hell does that mean? I just told you, we're going to bash them over the head, okay? Even as I received of my father, right? And that shows you right there, even Yahweh Shai going to be getting into it. Okay, the other nations were made for our pleasure, man. Right? And we're above the other nations. That's how the Heavenly Father set it up. Now, the same thing is said in the book of Psalms. Okay, ask of me. Let's read where, the, where that quote came from. Psalms, the second chapter. And I think it's around the uh, 10th verse or 9th verse. Well, let's start at the 8th uh, verse. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen. That's another word for the other nations, as in non-Israelites. This heathen here is non-Israelites. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. So they were created for our inheritance, the other nations. So yes, Bokab, we're going to enslave them in the kingdom. It's going to be our kingdom. It's not going to be the kingdom of the whole world. It's going to be the kingdom of the Israelites. The, the kingdom that's set to come is going to be the kingdom of the Israelites. Beginning with the head Israelite in charge, and that's Yahweh Shai. And right underneath him is going to be King David. King David, okay? Uh, and that's found in the book of Ezekiel, the uh, 30, what is it, the 37th chapter, where it clearly says, and I will set David to be a king over them. That hasn't happened yet. That's a future prophecy. So ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. We're going to possess them as slaves. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Like I said, we're going to be bashing them over the head, bashing them over the back. You know, when they get out of order, we're just going to bash them. And just to make a point, we might just bash them. A point of fear, like, es like Esau did to us. There are many times Esau uh, came down on our people, in, especially, particularly in slavery. He came down on our people just to make a point why he must be feared. And guess what? We're going to be doing that in the kingdom. Okay? Oh, and the other nations, they're going to fear us. You better believe it. We're going to be feared tremendously. Especially when the other nations see how much power the Heavenly Father is going to give us as His chosen people. Remember, we're gods, man, with a lowercase g. 
for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. How are you going to get around that scripture? Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Because that's the same rod of iron we read about in Revelation, which we're going to be carrying. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. There you go. All right, so let's get back to the video. Enslave non-Israelites as they deem it, because Israelites, they will enslave Israelites. We're Israelites because we are. Remember, they think they're Israelites. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember, they think they're Israelites, and they're really not. Well, who are the Israelites? Yeah, remember, they think that's basically that's what Vocab is thinking. That's what he's thinking. And indirectly, that's what, well, directly and indirectly, that's what he's saying. Remember, they think they're Israelites, those crazy, those crazy uh, Negroes, <laughs> those crazy black men. They think they're Israelites. Well, what is our true nationality? We're certainly not black. All right term black doesn't really exist that's another construct created that's not our true that color is not a, a true nationality okay the east indians the so-called east indians they're just as dark as we are they're not called black okay the eskimos are very dark people they're not called black all right so it's very clear that black is not a nationality it's just a color you know, we have a true nationality, and that is that we're the Hebrew Israelites that the Bible speaks of, and we're under a series of curses. Are they them people over there in the, the land of Israel, the Ashkenazis? Because guess what? You got Beta Israel, which are black people. I so you heard what Apostle said. Uh, let's hear that one more time. It's as they deem it, because we're Israelites. They will enslave Israelites. We're Israelites because we are. Remember, they think they're Israelites. <laughs> Remember, they think they're Israelites, and they're really not. But who are the Israelites? There you go. Are they them people? Over who are the Israelites? That's the million-dollar question. Who are the true Israelites according to the Bible? You know, Vocab believes in his heart of hearts that those are the so-called white people over there in Israel. That's ruling the land of Israel. They're the true Israelites that the Bible speaks, speaks of. No, they're not. They're Edomites. They're not Israelites. They are Edomites. Begin with the top banking families. Okay, and, and there are plenty of prophecies that prove that they are not the true Israelites. And one example is May 14th, 1948. Let's, let's take a look at what happened on May 14th, 1948. Also known as the Creation Day State of Israel. May 14th. Oops, May 14th. 1948. There you go. See? This is from Google. On May 14, 1948, David Ben-Gurion, there you go. I mentioned him earlier. The head of the Jewish agency, the Jewish agency, proclaimed the establishment of the State of Israel. So the State of Israel, and by the way, the the Bible is not talking about the state of Israel. The Bible is talking about the nation, the restoration of the nation of Israel, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom coming together. On, in 1948, these guys created a state of Israel. A state of Israel is something very different from what the Bible is talking about, as in a nation of Israel, all complete with all 12 tribes. Okay, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom coming together as one nation. Okay, not no state of Israel, the nation of Israel. U.S. President Harry S. Truman, who was in office at that time, recognized the new nation on the same day. See, now I say calling it a nation, the state of Israel, a nation. No, no, it's not. And it's, it can be easily proven when you go to Bible prophecy. We don't need to read anymore. So they're, according to this information here, they're claiming that uh, the biblical Israel... Israel came together, which the Lord had prophesied that it's going to come together. The biblical Israel, the biblical Israel came together in 1948, right? Well, if that's the case, right? If that's the case that the biblical Israel came together in 1948, how do you explain Isaiah the second chapter? 
one of many prophecies. How do you explain that? Isaiah 2. Let's begin at the first verse, which also, by the way, lines up with Micah, the fourth chapter. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Okay, the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. That's the whole nation, all 12 tribes. All right, the kingdom of Judah represent the southern kingdom. The kingdom of Jerusalem represent the northern kingdom. Okay, so we're in a time where the Lord is bringing the whole nation back together. Because remember, after the death of Solomon, King Solomon, the nation was split in two. So now we're in the time where the Lord is bringing the whole nation back together. Right? So it says, And it shall come to pass, meaning it's going to happen, in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. Right? That's the whole nation of Israel. In the top of the mountains, meaning that's a metaphor for the top of the governments. The Israelite government is going to be on top. It's going to be the top government on the planet earth. The government of the Israelites. And shall be exalted above the hills. Right. And all nations shall flow unto it. So did that happen back in 1948? The answer is no. All nations did not flow unto the creation state of Israel back in 1948. As a matter of fact, at the very time Ben-Gurion announced that, uh, Israel was in, in a conflict with the Egyptians. Okay, Israel was in conflict with the Egyptians at that, at that very same time. However, the Bible prophecy says all nations will flow unto the creation of the nation of Israel coming back together and being put back in the land of Israel. All nations are going to flow unto them. That did not happen in 1948. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but let's keep reading to make it even clearer to you. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, right, to the government of the Lord, which is going to be the Israelites. Remember, the word mountain is a, is a metaphor for government, okay? When, when, a, when a government has um, what they call a, a summit talks, right? You have something called summit talks, right? The word summit means peak of a mountain. So when you see the word mountain, some, in some scriptures, when you see the word mountain, it's a metaphor for government. So it says, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the power of Jacob. That's the government of the Israelites, which is going to be established in the land of Israel. And he will teach us of his ways, right? Because we're going to be the ones teaching of the laws, statutes, and commandments, which was given to us as a nation to elevate us over the other nations. Okay, we can easily prove that. You go in the book of Deuteronomy 4 and 5. We're going to go right to the point. Behold, I have taught you again. Who's this speaking to? The Israelites. Right? Deuteronomy 1 and 1 tells you that. Behold, I have taught you statues and judgments. This is Moses speaking to the Israelites. Behold, I have taught you statu statues and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do so in the land whether you go to possess it. Because we're about to possess the land of Canaan. This is shortly out of this is shortly after we came out of Egypt. So we're going back to the land of Canaan, which later would be known as the land of Israel. Okay, you have to know the history, right? Keep therefore and do them, do what? The, the statutes and judgments, the commandments, right? For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. You see that? All the non-Israelites. The law, statutes, and commandments are, are our wisdom in the sight of all the non-Israelites. Those are the same laws, statutes, and commandments we're going to teach the non-Israelites in the kingdom. When we go back to that scripture in Isaiah the second chapter. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statues and say, Surely this great people or this great nation is a wise and understanding people. You see that? You see how special we are? This is not reserved to everybody on the planet Earth. That's only reserved to the Israelites. Okay? So when you go back to Isaiah 2, so those, those are the same laws, statutes, and commandments the Lord gave us to elevate us over the other nations. Those same laws, statutes, and commandments are going to be taught to the other nations when they're in slavery underneath us in the kingdom of heaven. 
which is going to be on the planet earth. This is what I'm reading here. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. See that? And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, right? Now, was that established back in 1948? No. Hell no. Okay? As a matter of fact, one of the laws of the Heavenly Father is um, thou shall not, you, a man is not supposed to have sex with another man, as in homosexuality. Okay? That still goes on in the land of Israel. That's very prevalent. As a matter of fact, you have the biggest G.A.Y. parade on the planet Earth takes place where? In the city of Tel Aviv, which is in the land of Israel. So I ask you, if they're the people, if this, if the biblical Israel, Israel was truly established in 1948, why do you have uh, happy people, which we, we, we that's a code because you got to speak YouTube friendly, all right? Why do we have G.A.Y. people in the land of Israel today? When the G-A-Y people is against the law. We talk about the law now. Okay? It's against the law for a man to have sex with another man. According to the scriptures. Let's go to Leviticus 20 and 13. This is a law. Okay? Now, we just read the law is going to be established in the kingdom. And is going to be taught to the other nations. So, this is against the law. Leviticus 20 and 13. If a man also lie with mankind, that's two men laying together, having sex, right? As he lieth with a woman. You see the distinction? Both of them have committed an abomination. But wait a minute. Why is that abomination in the land of Israel today? All right. Why is the biggest G.A.Y. parade taking place in Tel Aviv, which is a city in Israel? Why? When... The Bible tells us when Israel is established, the true Israelites are established in the land of Israel, they will be following the laws and statutes and commandments of God. All right? They will be following, because the Israelites are going to teach them, the other nations, the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. Which I'm reading here that being a homosexual is against the law, statute, and commandment of the Heavenly Father. You see that? So that's a contradiction, man. So that what that shows is that 1948 was not the fulfillment of the true Israelites coming back together. As is said in Isaiah, the second chapter. That was not fulfilled in 1948. That's just one example. There's, there's many. Okay? Both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So um, the G.A.Y. people are not allowed. All right? The G.A.Y. people are not allowed to practice that abomination according to the law. So here, when we go back to Isaiah 2, it says the law will be established in the kingdom. Let's read it again. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways. One of his ways is that a man is not supposed to engage with another man in sex. That's an abomination according to the law. Leviticus 20 and 13, right? And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. You see that? For out of Zion shall go forth the law. So if, if that's the case, there's not supposed to be any G-A-Y people in Israel today. There's not supposed to be any homosexuals in Israel and or lesbians in Israel today, according to the law, because it's forbidden by the law. So the question is, why is it still prevalent in Israel? Because they are not the people. They are not the people. If they was, then homosexuality and lesbianism would be banned in Israel. Even in the Knesset, right? And I read this um, um, some time ago. I did, even did a video on it. The Knesset, which is the law-making body in the land of Israel today. The Knesset, right? You can Google it. You got certain men and women... Which, by the way, women ruling over men, that's a, that's a violation, according to the Bible. Clearly it says a woman is not supposed to usurp authority over the man. But in, however, in the Israel, Israelite, in, not Israelite, in the Israeli, I meant to say Israeli, in the Israeli Kadeset, you have a law, which is the lawmaking body of, of, of that land, you have men and women that are engaging in, in acts uh, of abomination. That is homosexuality and lesbianism. 
within the Knesset. How is that possible? Okay? So when you add up all these facts, you can see that they're not the people. Okay? It says, And we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now, here's another point. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. We don't see that happening. That didn't happen in, the, in 1948. Which, by the way, when it says beat their swords into plowshares, that's a metaphor. Their swords meaning their weapons. Okay? That's a metaphor for they're going to put down their weapons and pick up farming tools. Why? Because they're going to be in slavery underneath us in the kingdom. That didn't happen in 1948. The other nations, they're still holding on to their swords. They, as a matter of fact, they're about to engage in World War III. They've picked up their armament, okay? The other nations preparing to go against Israel. As in, the Rus uh, as in Russia and the other nations that's going to be with Russia, right? To battle against Israel and then ultimately America. So that didn't happen in 1948. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Again, another metaphor. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Now, did this happen in 1948? Hell no. From 1948 to the present, we've seen so many wars. Okay? As a matter of fact, the very night of May 14th, 1948, a skirmish broke out between Israel and Egypt. Google it. So was the state, or rather was the nation of Israel truly created on May 14th, 1948, according to the book of Isaiah, the second chapter? The answer is no. So by default, they're not the people. They are not the people. Furthermore, what happened to the, the uh, uh, David being set on the, on the throne, King David, all right, ruling over the Israelites? What happened to the visions that, if that was established in 1948, what happened to the visions that the Apostle John had of New Jerusalem? Such as this vision right here, Revelation 21 and 10. As you see here, the New Jerusalem. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from the heavenly father, having the glory of the heavenly father and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels and the names written down. Did, was that established in 1948? <laughs> you know the answer to that. Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, right? So David Ben-Gurion creates the state of Israel. What happened to the rest of the tribes? Where's the tribe of Issachar? Where's the tribe of Naphtali? Where's the tribe of Asher? Huh? They can't tell you. Because 1948, like we've been saying, 1948 was a joke. And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. And, that, and, and remember, the Lord, the Lord himself said, Not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass till all be fulfilled. So all these prophecies got to be fulfilled. So the big question is, you heard Elder Pastor ask the question, who are the true Israelites? Because if that was the case, if that happened back in 1948, well, how come these prophecies still have not been fulfilled? <laughs> Which are the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, on the west three gates. Where are the gates? Where's the city that's supposed to be built on foundations of precious stones? Okay, that's clear, clearly Bible prophecy. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. There you go. And in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Where's the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb etched on the city, the city of Jerusalem? Where? Did that happen back in 1948? Who are the 12 apostles of the Lamb? According to the so-called Jews, who are the 12 apostles of the Lamb? Can they tell us? Huh? 
<laughs> but these are visions that the Apostle John saw. You see that? Look at that. The street. Let's read that 18 verse. And the building of the wall of it was like, was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. Did that happen back in 1948? Now, mind you, a brother from England, Brother Karabai, his woman had a dream of her in the kingdom. Actually, it was a vision. She saw herself in the kingdom, and she saw her reflection in the street. Okay? Because like it says here, the street is going to be like, like glass. Because it's going to be pure gold. Pure, we're going to have streets, literal streets of gold in our kingdom, according to Bible prophecy. Here. Did that happen back in 1948? No. So they are not the people. They are not the people. Here it gives you all the precious stones the foundation uh, city will be sitting on. The foundation city of Jerusalem. All the precious stones it's going to be sitting on. Okay? So they're not the people. By default, they didn't fit the prophecies. Uh, 1948, they don't fit the prophecies, so they're not the people. Okay? So what was getting ready to happen is the Lord is getting ready to gather the true Israelites, also known as the true worshipers, and bring them back to the land of Israel. Like it says here, Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. Because we, as a nation, we've been exiled out of our land. Going back to the, the diaspora, where the Israelites were scattered into many lands. They had to flee Jerusalem. They had to flee the land of Israel, flee in Roman persecution, which the Romans were Edomites. They persecuted us and then they eventually took our land them right along with the Arabs. That's why, as it is written in prophecy, strangers fight over your land. Your land is devoured. Strangers, your land is, um, a matter of fact, let's just go, we'll get to it. Isaiah 1 and 7. All right, our land is in shambles right now. Isaiah 1 and 7, it says, your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Let's go back to 67 AD, 70 AD. That's, that's what happened. That's what brought about the diaspora, the scattering of the Israelites outside the land of uh Israel and the, and the land ain't never been the same since going back to 67 AD 70 AD your country is desolate your cities are burned with fire your land strangers devour it in your presence you got something called the Balfour Declaration where you had two heathens the so-called uh, uh, Jews the Edomites and the so-called Arabs the Ishmaelites fighting over our land it's called the Balfour Declaration you can google it Okay, they're both fighting over our land. That land belongs to us. So it says, your land, strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers as in the other nations. And the prophecy says that the land of Israel would be uh, trodden down by the Gentiles, the other nations, until the times, um, roughly paraphrasing that scripture, until the end of, end of the times, roughly paraphrasing. And when will the end of the time be? When Yahweh Shai comes. Because Yahweh Shai, as it is written, 1 Corinthians 15 and 24, Yahweh Shai is going to put down all rule. Let's read it. Okay? So that's what we're patiently waiting for. 1 Corinthians 15 and 24. It says, Then cometh the end. See that? Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles till what? The time of the end, right? Then cometh the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the heavenly father. Right. The, the, the he is Yahweh Shai. Because he's going to set up his kingdom on the planet earth. Which by default is his is the kingdom of Israel. Yahweh Shai himself being an Israelite. Of the tribe of Judah. The conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. It says. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the heavenly father. Even the father. When he shall have put down all rule. All authority and power. That's what our Lord is coming to do. So no, 1948 was not the fulfillment of the, of the true biblical Israelites being back in power. That was not fulfilled in 1948. And there's so many examples I can go into to prove that. I just showed you some. You know, the example dealing with the uh, fact that war still goes on. The example dealing with all the other nations, they're supposed to go to the Israelites. If they're the Israelites, they're supposed to go to them and learn of the law, statutes, and commandments. We see the law... Um, we see homosexuality and lesbianism, 
lesbianism still practiced in the land of Israel when it ought not to be, according to the law. It's an abomination. I read it to you. So they're not the people. I mean, I can't make it any, any more plainer. So on that note, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you were edified. Drop a line in the comment section. On to the next one.